Next up. North Texas man held on $10 million bond after fatally shooting co-worker over long breaks. Yeah, you heard right. Louisville police say a man murdered his co-worker because he became obsessed with her and focused on how many breaks she was taking at work. 51-year-old Travis Merrill is charged with murder. Court documents reveal that after his co-worker complained about him, obsessing over her, he created a detailed plan to kill her in front of their co-workers because she, quote, caused him pain. Unfortunately, these type of nightmare scenarios are not uncommon, but they are always just as tragic. Back in November 2022, I caught the story of Michael Jordan Carpenter, who worked in Dubo Textile in St. Cloud, Minnesota. He murdered his co-worker. Worker Nicole Hammond in the parking lot after she repeatedly rejected his advances. Now, repeatedly means I shouldn't have to keep telling your ass over and over again that I'm not interested and no one should have to come to work every day and be faced with some weirdo who thinks that the job is some sort of singles club or spot where you can go to meet the one. A 51 year old North Texas man fatally shot his co worker at her desk Thursday, October 17th because he was angry over her long breaks according to court records well excuse me my breaks is the only time that i have to distance myself from you squares during the workday lewisville police responded to the 1800 block of lakeway drive shortly after 11 30 a.m after someone called 911 to report an active shooter which is always a terrifying ordeal and all too common today officers responded quickly and detained the shooter at the scene the department said in a social media posts the woman who was shot was taken to a local hospital but later died from her injuries according to police he shot her five times at her cubicle in front of if it wasn't the whole staff in front of what was a large portion of the staff the victim has been identified as tamara Calazzo. she and the suspect travis merrill worked together at allegiance trucking well neighbors of the suspected killer say he was a bit off but they had no idea he was charged with murder until we told them today she had all already went through the proper channels, letting HR and letting management know that they have a true creep in the building, shooting his shot all the time, pulling up from the bleacher seats. So I can see the next step would be to avoid any additional confrontation by coming back from break a little bit later than usual, taking a long way around the office because he probably knows the path that she takes to her desk. Merrill is being held in Denton County Jail on a $10 million bond, according to Denton County jail records he told detectives he was obsessed with Colazzo and became angry because she didn't pay any attention to him like a child and took unauthorized long breaks at work you're probably the reason why I'm sure he's the reason why star telegram media partner WFAA TV reported she's not obligated to talk to you anyway anything good morning hello good evening goodbye if it's not work related then those phrases are more than enough workplace conversation According to Merrill's arrest warrant affidavit obtained by WFAA, Colazzo had told Merrill she didn't want him watching her when she took breaks. Weirdo. She reported Merrill's behavior to human resources, and as a consequence, he couldn't return to work until he talked with a counselor over the phone. The affidavit says Merrill admitted to police he was obsessed with Colazzo and began getting ever increasingly angry by her taking what he considered to be unauthorized long breaks during work hours as well as not paying any attention to him you mean to tell me they put you in a grown man's time out and told you that before you can return to work your job how you make your money that you have to talk to a therapist and it's all over a woman that just wasn't interested in you it's not the end of the world man these people sure ain't built for tough at all when Merrill did return to work he could tell Colazzo was avoiding him as she should the affidavit David states, you haven't given anyone any reason to want to interact with you at all. He also felt his co-workers considered him a psychopath and they would be considering correct. But, but I would say there should have been at least one person that pulled him to the side and say, hey, you're a weirdo, man. Either dial it down or just shut up because people are really unsettled by you. Merrill said Colazzo caused them pain.
pain. So he wanted her to experience pain. According to the affidavit, he bought guns and practiced with them at home with the intentions of shooting Colazzo at work in front of their co-workers. Police said just a true villain. Twice before the shooting, Merrill bought his guns to work. The affidavit states the first time was his day off and he just stayed in the parking lot. Now, there's absolutely no way anyone could have known that this is what he was planning. But camping out in the parking lot on your day off is definitely a red flag, a sign of sorts. The second day was the day before the shooting, but he decided not to use the weapons because it didn't feel like the right time. And there's a power trip and being able to spring this on anyone anytime you want because nobody knows what you have planned out. On October 17th, Merrill told police he followed Colazzo to the parking lot during her lunch break. He sat in his vehicle and prepared his firearms while watching Colazzo in her car, according to the affidavit. Then he followed her back inside and ambushed her at her cubicle. I kind of felt something strange about him. White says on Sunday, a relative of Merrill's was moving and giving away belongings from Merrill's apartment. He gave me these shirts. He said his son had to go out of town. It was not until Fox 4 told White on Monday, however, the reason Merrill is no longer his neighbor is because Merrill is charged with murder. And so this is that man's shirts. I have a killer's shirts. It's just my opinion because what the hell do I know? But there should be no embarrassment. There should be no humiliation or feelings of anger or frustration when a woman says no after you shoot your shot or she's just not interested. Because at the end of the day, you stepped up and let it be known what you're thinking. Now, the embarrassment comes in when you can't take no for an answer, when you react poorly, when she has to tase you, when she has to pepper spray you, when she has to call her boyfriend or her husband up to knock you out or put you in a sleeper hold. The embarrassment comes when HR, when corporate has to come down and tell you that you can't come back to work over this until you speak to a licensed professional. See, the L, the humiliation, the embarrassment never comes from anyone saying no. It comes from the way someone reacts to that no. According to the affidavit, Merrill shot Colazzo at least four times. Another source said five. KDFW TV reported that two dozen co-workers saw the shooting. I don't know how many many employees worked there, but that had to be a lot of them. Merrill turned himself into police when they arrived, according to KDFW. He told detectives the exact dates that Colazzo had taken breaks and how long each one lasted. What the hell is wrong with you, man? Allegiance Truck said in a statement obtained by KDFW that they are supporting the victim's family and are heartbroken over her death. This is a tough one. No one else was injured in the shooting, but the Louisville office has been closed indefinitely. We as for the community's support as our company has unfortunately joined the growing national community of workplaces affected by gun violence, officials said in the statement. I don't know these people personally, but my condolences go out to the Colazzo family, friends, and other loved ones. This is truly a tragic and senseless loss. There you have it, kids. Travis Merle. Tell me what you think.